Hello students, this is Ashini from Chinta.com. Today, we will talk about something called Fare Addition or sometimes it's pronounced as Fare Addition. It's a very simple but beautiful way to connect number theory and geometry. And it opens up the wonderful world of hyperbolic geometry. So, the Ferry Edition actually comes up in the Chinta research programs for school students. But if you are just preparing for Olympiads and you want to take a peek into the world outside the Olympiads, the wonderful world of research, uh, then this video is for you. So what is Fare addition? Uh, well, I'll give you an example and you might just smile because this is one of the ways we used to add fractions when we were really little kids. Of course, that method is wrong, but now we have a way to see the effectiveness of that method. And what is it? Suppose we have two fractions, 2 by 3 and 4 by 5. And we define something called the Fare addition which I will denote by plus with a round sign. So it's like a special kind of addition of fractions. And that is, we just add the numerators, 2 plus 4, and we would add the denominators, 3 plus 5. So we have 6 by 8. So 2 by 3, plus 4 by 5 turns out, turns out to be 2 plus 4 is 6 3 plus 5 is 8 this particular method which is of course the wrong way to add fractions has a special name it's called the Fare addition okay so let us look at this a little bit more carefully and see how we can think about this geometrically. Because I promise this particular method has a wonderful implication in the world of geometry as well as number theory. First, let's look at the set P. The set P contains all members P over Q, P comma Q, such that HCF of P and Q is equal to 1. So you can think of this as reduced fraction. Reduced fraction. So let's say 2 by 3 is a reduced fraction, but 4 by 6 is not a reduced fraction. 2 by 3 is a reduced fraction, 4 by 6 is not a reduced fraction. Okay, so, okay, the set P has a little bit more going on. So, basically, we would take PQ or minus P minus Q. We will think of it as the same element. Okay, all right. So, there are two ways to think about it. One is P by Q, like a fraction, or as a pair P comma Q. And both ways to think about them will be useful in this context. What we will do is, we will put all of these P comma Q elements in the circumference of a circle. So let me draw a circle. Here is a circle. And we will draw these numbers in the circumference. So how do we do it? We'll take 0, 1, start here. Then we have 1, 1 here. And we have 1, 0 here. And we have minus 1, 1 here. Okay. So first thing first, these are all members of P. These are all members of this set. 
So it's not just 1 comma 1, it is plus minus 1 comma 1. So it's 1 comma 1 or minus 1 comma minus 1. It's the same element. The same thing is true about each of them. So to make things simpler, I will erase all these plus minus sides. All right, let's do that. And now we will be joining some of these points. Of course, there are more points here, but we will be joining some of the pairs of points and we will draw something called a graph. So let me write that down. What is the meaning of a graph? This is not from coordinate geometry. This is from combinatorics. What is graph? A graph is a collection of vertices, corners, and edges. So if I tell you what are the vertices, and if I tell you what are the edges, you will be able to draw the graph. Okay? So how would you draw the vertices? Well, the vertices are members of this set P. In fact, just to make sure everything is starting with far A, I just put F here. So let's call this set F. Okay. So members of F, this special graph, sometimes known as the far A graph, this special graph has vertices for members of F. So for each member of this set F, we have a vertex or a point. Okay? Alright? Now how do we draw the edges? How do we draw the edges? So here is a rule. There's a rule to draw edges. So you will join PQ or P1, Q1 and P2, Q2. You will join these two points using an edge if something special happens. And what is the special thing? Well, you think about this as a fraction or you can think about this as a matrix. There are multiple ways to think about the same thing, the pair of points that I'm talking about. And the condition is this. P1, Q2 minus P2, Q1. That is the determinant of this matrix is equal to plus or minus 1. If this happens, then you join P1 by Q1 or P1, Q1 with P2, Q2. That is the edge relationship. Edge relation. Okay, so you see that immediately we have this edge. Maybe I can draw it using a different color. Here is an edge. Why do I join 0, 1 and 1, 1? Okay, I join it because... 0 times 0 by 1 or if I write it in the matrix format 0 1 1 1 if I do the determinant of this matrix it will be 0 times 1 minus 1 times 1 which is minus 1 that is the condition I will join two vertices using an edge if they have this determinant property the same thing goes with these two vertices the same thing goes with these two vertices. You can check these two vertices and these two vertices. You can check each of those cases. But there are many, many other points. How do we draw them? And that is where the Fare addition comes into play. That's the magical part. What you do is that you do the Fare addition of these two points and you will get a third point which is connected to both of these vertices. So, 0 by 1, 
Safari edition one by one is simply one by two. This point can be also represented as one comma two. So that's a point that's here. Let's draw it here. Let's draw it in the in, in the middle of one comma one and zero comma one. One comma two. And we have an edge between them. And you can check that this is true. You can check that there is an, indeed an edge between 1 comma 1 and 1 comma 2. Let me write it down and you will see probably. 1 comma 1 and 1 comma 2. Is there an edge between them? Well, let's check that. We will write it in the matrix format. And we will calculate the determinant, which is 2 times 1 minus 1 times 1. So 2 minus 1 is 1, and that is what we needed. We want the determinant of the matrix to be either 1 or minus 1. And that's the case here, 1. So yes, indeed they are adjacent. Adjacent means there is an edge between them. And similarly, there is an edge between these two. In the same manner, you can keep on drawing all the edges. And you will get a wonderful looking graph, which is known as the Fare graph. Here is the Fare graph. And it's not, it doesn't end here. There are infinitely many vertices. So there is one more here. There are infinitely many vertices and there are infinitely many edges. For example, you can really find this point using the Fare addition. It's 1 plus 1, 2, 1 plus 2, 3. You can find that and you can check that indeed these vertices are adjacent. So, okay, so this is the Fare graph. Now, of course, if I if I remove the uh, if I remove this circle, because the circle is only there for reference, it's only there to help us draw. So, if I remove the circle, you will get the Fare graph. The circle is not there. Okay. Now, the question is, what is the relationship of this beautiful looking graph with hyperbolic geometry or geometry in general? So, I will not be able to speak about all of it today because it's a vast, vast subject. But here is a hint for you. If you are familiar with Mobius transformations, Mobius transformations are often denoted by matrices ABCD whose determinant is 1 denoted by SL2Z, the Mobius transformations, if you look at them, they have a natural action on the Fare graph. That's a hint. What does it mean that it has a natural action on Fare graph? Well, suppose we have two points P1, Q1 and P2, Q2 and they are adjacent, that is, there is a edge between them, connecting these two points. Then what we can do is that we can take a matrix like this, A, B, C, D. So it's easy to construct matrices like this. Let's say 2, 4, 7, 1. That's an example of a matrix like this. So if I apply this on P1, Q1, I will get the point 2, P1 plus Q1, 7P1 plus 4Q1. Similarly, if I apply that matrix on P2Q2, then I will get another point 2P2 plus Q2, 7P2 plus 4Q2. These two points will again be members of the Fare graph and there will be an edge connecting those two points. So if the initial points were connected by edges, 
the output points will also be connected by edges in the Faraday graph. Actually, it's quite simple to prove it. Um, I'll give you give this to you as a homework. So this action of SL2Z on the Faraday graph that gives you a hint that you can think about this Faraday graph as being embedded in the hyperbolic plane. If you don't know what the hyperbolic plane is, maybe we can discuss it in another video. But it's a wonderful world of geometry where uh, the idea of distance and the idea of distance preserving maps completely change. I hope you learned something from this video. If you are interested in research, then check the link in the description. Uh, school students are doing wonderful research projects at Chinta. They learn a lot doing that. Especially if you have some experience with mathematical Olympiads, then research can be really useful for you, both from the point of view of learning new things and for university applications. Thank you for watching this video. I will see you in the next one.